The reason we only stock Diodario strings is because Diodario strings are perfect. When people come in here, they think that we get them for free or, or something like that, but we don't. We have no other reason except for dependability and tone. Hey, I'm John Bollinger with Premier Guitar, and I'm with Slash. Hey, hey. Slash, thank you for joining us No, today. thanks for having me. Man, congrats on the album. Thank you. I mean, thanks. No. God. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm laughing because it's such a surprise to me that everybody's so into it. Because um, when we did it, it was just really just for the fun of it. Yeah. And we had a great time making it, and it, we did it relatively quickly. And then on top of that, we did it a year ago because I couldn't release it right away because I was in the middle of a Guns tour. Sure. And then I had the uh, Conspirators tour to f on the heels of that. So I had to wait till all that was done. So we just released it, released it pretty recently. So I hadn't even really put that much thought into it. Right. And all of a sudden everybody's, oh, you know, really excited about it. So it's nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, th I'm calling it now, I'm thinking of Grammy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <okay>. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. thank you. It's so, um, other big news, your 335, that kind of yeah. came into play on this, right? Yeah, you know, um, there's a, a guitar store in LA, I don't know if I can talk about brand or-, or Oh yeah. But uh, I, there's a, right near, near where I live, there's Norm's uh, guitar store, Norman's Rare Guitars. Sure. And I went in there one day, because I do that. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and he showed me this 1963 335 that had this really sort of cool finish on it. And I played it in the, in the shop, and I thought, this is actually a really great guitar. So I ended up buying it from him. And then, you know, a couple months later, I ended up going in the studio to do the, the Orgy of the Dam record. I took that guitar with me, and it became the most, the most used of my guitars on that record. Right? Really? Was yeah, it, so. okay, like, how did that happen? It just, it just fit the part? Well, it's it just, just you know, like, it? for this, I think the, the, the songs that we were doing, that I was using it for, um, over the Les Paul, it had a, a much more cleaner, but still aggressive kind of sound, right. and it just it really worked to get the chords to really sing out, and and it also worked for the solos and everything. It was almost like I'd never played a three thirty five before, which I have. I have a couple. I just never yeah. locked into it like I did on this record. So it's become a pretty predominant part of the set. But they Gibson decided to reissue it and so they came up with this replica of that particular guitar so it's nice yeah I, i'm told we're at the gibson garage right now and i'm told they've already sold out of yeah that's what they told me yeah which yeah. is cool but i mean i used i i used the replica that gibson makes made now live oh, really? and i left the 63 at home because the new ones sound really great so. yeah perfect, perfect. <laughs> yeah so um on the album how did you select the songs um, it's sort of, uh, it, it, it's pretty simple, it, you know, like all these songs had a very direct influence, like very specific influence on me. But uh, in the 90s, in the late 90s, I had a blues cover band called Slash's Blues Ball. Right. And so a couple of the guys that played on this record were my partners back then, and we had this drunken club band, and <laughs> we had a really killer set list. And uh, so it was something that even back then, I thought, God, I would love to record this. But it was just for the fun of it at the time. We were just yeah. having a good time, and I didn't ever take it that seriously, so it never happened. So fast forward all these years, and I'm thinking, God, I really want to do a blues thing. Um, and I thought, well, I'll call Teddy and Johnny up, and maybe we'll sort of put that back together. Um, and so Teddy actually had the set list from like 1998 and 99. So I looked at it and I was like, well, let's do this song, let's do this song, let's do this song. And that was basically it. And then there was a couple songs that we didn't do in the set back then that I've always wanted to do. So, I, you know, I put that into the list. I wanted to make sure it was no more than like 10 songs. Right. And, uh, and that was it. So just really, really specific songs that had a very direct influence on how I started playing guitar or just, you know, just music that I really loved when I was a kid. Right. Yeah, you know, in, in listening to the record, I mean, you can hear, I mean, it just sounds like 
guys in a room just yeah. throwing down. That's what man. that's that's what it was all about. It was just that's why we didn't spend a lot of time with it. We just yeah. wanted to be very sort of fun, you know, um, just jam on the song, come up with our own arrangements, how we sort of think it should go. Right. Um, I mean, all the guys have a lot of integrity as far as the influence is concerned. So always stay true to the melody and to what really made the song great as far as we were concerned. And the rest of it was sort of an open palette, right? And, and then just jammed them until we got some sort of an arrangement that we liked and then went straight into the studio and recorded them live in the studio. Great, yeah. great. And last night, uh, when you all played here, you, you were using your 335, but also um, that Explorer, yeah. that Firebird. Yeah, uh, the Explorer is, is cool. It's a, so it's a, cool. It's a replica of the, uh, there's a, a vault back here, yeah. and there's a 1958 called Big Ed, Big Ed 335, um, Explorer. Right. And so Leo Scala, who's a luthier that Gibson uses, um, or he does, he does stuff with Gibson, um, he built this, right? And I heard about it. And I say, hey, can I check that guitar that I heard you made? And he brought it over to the house, and I've had it ever since. Yeah. No, Richard Forrest. Uh, yeah, Richard Forrest has used his stuff before I did. And yeah. he's the one that first turned me on. Oh, really? Leo. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, and then the Firebirds are just, uh, I have a couple of them that they just sound great. God, I love Firebirds. Great, man. And then there's a couple Les Pauls in there. Yeah. That, yeah. And even a Travis Bean. That oh, yeah. Big surprise. I've, yeah, I've been actually I've been using Travis Beans. I, I have one out on the, the Guns tour as well um, that I predominantly use for slide. Right. Yeah. Right. Really cool guitars though. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's just it's it was really fun to hear these kind of different tones. You yeah. know, it like kind of took you a little different place. It's yeah. Really yeah. Cool. I think it's it's it was fun doing this record because um, you know like. I've been doing a Les Paul Marshall kind of a thing for obviously for guns and that, that just sort of morphed into Velvet Revolver and into sure. um, the, the Conspirators and I just always, but there was a period there where amp wise I started to have a, I was like with Marshalls, it's just starting to get a little stale for me, you know? Yeah. So I, I, on this record, I, I had all these combos that I was trying out and I had this magnetone combo. Right. And that changed a lot of things because it's it's uh, more sort of a growly old school kind of, and it's not such a saturation driven type of amp, you know. Yeah. And and it it really sort of made some of these guitars where you could really get into the tones of the guitars because it wasn't um, dominated by the the Marshall kind of saturation. Sure, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it really made some of these guitars sound great. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah, and I mean your your rig. We'll, we'll talk to your tech later on, but we got a sneak peek at it, and it's it's so minimal yeah. and so bare. I mean, like a kid could walk into Guitar Center and basically buy yeah, that's, your pedal board. You yeah, know, well, for, and that's actually the, this is the first time I've even used the pedal board on my own. Yeah, because we're in stadiums. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, because because Craig, my guitar tech, you know, when I'm doing guns, we know all the songs, and yeah. it's just, all, all I use is a preamp and a Wawa pedal, right? So for the preamp, he just knows this is where the solo section is and stuff like that. But on, on this this sort of application, I've got the Wawa and I've got the, the preamp, but since there's so much improv, improv going on, yeah. whenever I use the preamp, I have to do it myself because I can't, Look at him every five minutes, right. back and forth, or you know what I mean. So it's yeah. been an interesting thing, and I got a phase on there that I'm yeah. using, and a couple old school vibro kind of deals for some of the Hendrixy stuff, and it's, it's cool. I'm having a good time. Yeah, with right. I mean, you're <laughs> stomping yeah. on him again. Yeah, That's great. Yeah. How long's it been? It's been a long time. I haven't had a pedal board in front of my feet since uh, since the '80s. Well, because you guys got so big so fast. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's just you know it, when it was there was never much to use anyway. But right, like the guitar techs always would just do it. A lot of it had to do with the fact that you run around so much right. that trying to get back to your pedal board was basically it was an impossibility. Right. You know, and I, even even then, I have uh, on these big gigs, I have three Wawa pedals. Strategically <laughs> loaded, sure. located, so I can be anywhere and still yeah. get to one. Yeah, yeah, because so. that's, that's your one 
you, you, you want to go have. to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, but uh, in this in this kind of setting, the stages, you know, like I'm not doing as much of that. You know, I'm sort of like sort of sticking to one area. I'm using a cable, yeah. right? No in ears, right? Like down to like like real basics. So so you know, I can afford to have a pedal board where I can control my own stuff. Right, and and you're like stretching a lot on this show. Like you guys, like, do you have a I mean, the arrangements, are they, do, they, do they, they, there's, they kind of go where they go? A yeah, bit? There's, they're a little open-ended. Yeah. Um, um, so that's one of the great things about doing this is that you have, it, not everything is so structured, yeah. and you can just sort of open up, and then you just have to turn around to every guy's, okay, I'm done, and then you shake out with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's because you can call an audible. Yeah, 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 all the time. Yeah, that's great. That's but I have, a, I have a good um, relationship with these guys, and we've... Uh, you know, like Ted and, and and Johnny and I go back a long ways. That's your keyboard player. That's the player. keyboard player is Teddy and Johnny Guerrero is on on drums. I mean, on on bass. Sorry. And then, uh, so we have a, a chemistry that goes way back. But Tash came into it, um, and he's somebody that I saw play at one of these blues functions that I did a few years ago. And he got up and sang and played guitar, and I was like, wow, this guy is great. So we had him open for the conspirators uh, back in 2022, I guess it was, and he was his band was phenomenal. So that sort of stuck in my mind. So when I was doing this record, I thought he would be great to to bring into this. He's a great guitar player, oh, really great. bluesy guitar player, amazing singer, and great singer. Yeah, man. So living for the city. Yeah, God. no, that that was the only reason I could get away with doing that song. Right, he could sing it. You know? Yeah, I mean that's like yeah, what a killer song. Yeah, man. when we go out on tour, we didn't do it last night because we had a short set, but uh, when we got on tour, that's going to be one of the staples in the set. Oh yeah, but um, yeah, there's a great chemistry though. So so we can improvise and and look around at each other and sort of, you know, call an audible and Right. Yeah. You know. And and are you are you gonna play pedal steel on this? Uh, uh, yeah, on this I, I will on the tour. There's two songs that are earmarked for pedal steel. So we've, we've been rehearsing them, but like we only could play an hour. Yeah. Know? Yeah. <laughs> so it'll definitely be part of the set. So yeah. I'm looking forward to that. God man, that's yeah, great. getting better at it, you know. That's for and you get better when you go out and put yourself in front of an audience, it forces you to oh. to pick up your game a little bit. Right. Uh, otherwise yeah. people throw shit at you. <laughs> right, right. When you're when you're live without a net, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. no choice. It, it really it sort of moves the process along to learn how to do it properly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great. Well, man, we are. Uh, I'm excited about the record. So glad you could join us today. Yeah, man, no, it's and great to sit congrats. down. With you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. We're gonna go talk to your tech and uh, get the rest of the details. Okay, now I'm with Tech Ace Bergman. Ace, thanks so much for taking a minute to uh, talk to us. Sure. Take us through the rig. Tell us about this. All right, what we've got here is a Scala made Gibson Custom Shop 1958 reissue. Wow. It's a great guitar. It's one off, obviously, it's quite heavily relicked. Uh, one of the main guitars on the tour that we're doing right now, the blues tour. Uh, none of these are, this rig has very little in common with anything that we use with guns or with uh, the Slash and Miles and the Conspirators band. Sure. So this is all different stuff um, for the most part. So yeah, this is a great, great ex uh, explorer, obviously. Very heavily relicked. It feels and plays just like the, you know, the real thing, the 58th. So wow, it's a real special guitar. He loves it a lot. And uh, Beautiful. it's a real winner. It's a real winner. I wish I could let you play it, but then I'd have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, I mean, he's changing song. He's changing guitars almost every song through the- Quite, quite a bit, yeah. You know? And then there's also a, you know, some pedal steel on this tour too that we're, really yeah he's, he's picked that up as a new uh avenue of musical expression oh how cool yeah. okay well this is a strong start let's see what's uh, great guitar let's see what's next all right so these guitars in the vault there's there's one and a backup of everything except for this explorer that's the only explorer we have so here we have a pair of firebirds okay. these are really cool Beautiful guitar. There's oh, a red yeah. one here. This is the red one. And then we have a green one also. So yeah, this has got the uh, mini humbuckers and then it's got that uh, vibrato on it. Pretty, pretty straightforward as far as, you know, it's got the mandolin tuners. Another great guitar. He uses this on a few songs. Um, yeah. Great Firebird. What, what, uh, 
what strings is he running? I guess the yeah, these are all the Ernie these balls. all get the Ernie Ball his signature set. This yeah. is the forty eight, so that's the low E. So yeah, yeah it's eleven to forty eight. Um, we get uh, standard tuning. Uh, most of it's a half step down. Um, there's a little bit of slide stuff, and then obviously the pedal steel is a whole world of tuning involved with that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, most by and large, it's half step down. Okay, great. Sure. So one and a backup, and he only uh, so he'll change per song, and then if he breaks a string, immediately, the, or yeah. you know, at, I mean, at the end of the solo or whenever's convenient for yeah. him, he'll make that call. You know, sure, because he. He can, he's really, obviously, he's a very good guitar player. And yeah, he can get yeah, by without yeah, a string until right. Right. Uh, he finishes what he's trying to do. But yeah. obviously, he loves having all six there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and this is a oh, yeah. 335. This is his new signature, This is right? a new signature one that's, uh, that Gibson's doing with us. Wow. Another beautiful guitar. It's got some aging to it. And then anything he touches ages five years a day. Right. So... So this 335 is based on one of his 1963 ES35s that's original. This is a clone or copy, you know, sure. custom shops making. They got a lot of the cool same features like that custom made badge, which is awesome. It's got nylon saddles. It's got a Bigsby vintage style tuners, rosewood fretboard. Great guitar. This one looks so much like the original that when they were doing a photo shoot, they had to keep them separate just so they wouldn't end up in the wrong case and, you know, wow. get mixed up and sell somebody a really valuable guitar. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, this thing's awesome. Uh, great guitar. Sounds great. He plays it a lot in this blues project. This is a definitely a workhorse now. Yeah. Okay. Great guitar. Mm -hmm. Love it. Okay. What do we got next? All right. This next guitar is going to come as a big shock to everybody. Slash plays a Les Paul. This one's actually a 1986 Les Paul standard. It's got huh. quite a bit of heft to it. Uh, he's a big fan of the 80s Les Pauls. You know, the great era, as the modern ones are as well. And yeah, this is a great guitar. I mean, it's a standard, so you could find the specs anywhere. This is one he really likes. It's got a great neck. Wow. You know, it's got the uh, era-specific tuners. These are nice. They got a nice big cap stand on them. You know, I wonder how he chooses guitars for a tour, because he's got to have so many Les Pauls at this point. Yeah. Um, and a you, lot of signatures, yeah. and yet he's playing this, this 80s. That's, that's cool. The, one of the main things he looks for in a guitar is the neck. If he likes the neck, that's, that's a big plus. And then from there, you know, that's his first thing he looks for is the neck. Yeah. Then he goes to the pickups. A lot of times when he gets a new guitar, he'll listen to it and decide if he likes the stock pickups, which in this case obviously he did. And then if he wants to change it up, then we'll put in the Seymour Duncan, you know, his signature set. And we know what to expect out of those. We know sure. we get the slash sound. And so, yeah, those are the two main things. First is the feel and then get the sound as close as you can. And right. then like anybody, he also likes playing with his new toys. So if he gets a new guitar, he'll try and work it into the uh, sure. into the rotation. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Keep something fresh. He loves shopping and getting new guitars and stuff. So, yeah. Who doesn't? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Obviously. Very cool. And then we have a backup uh, 59 reissue to that. And then last of all here in the vault, we have something pretty rare or rarer. We have a pair of these Travis beans. Wow. So these are, these are a bit harder to come by. These are slid up for slide playing. Uh -huh. So we're doing slide tuning on these. You can see we got markings where all the knobs go just to get it right every day. Right. Uh, these things famously have aluminum necks. Right. Aluminum necks have made something of a comeback in the recent years. But originally, you know, Travis Bean was the original aluminum neck guitar, followed shortly by Kramer made one for a while. They should be reissued, the DMZ huh. series by Kramer, if anyone's listening. <laughs> we're, in, we're in Kramer country, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, these are super cool, super old. And nowadays, since they're getting rarer and aluminum necks are making a comeback, they're pretty, they're not cheap. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, this is definitely a... That would seem like a real adjustment, just the feel of that. Yeah, no, that. They, yeah, they definitely feel, you know, it's, it's a very cold feeling. Right. Neck. Not, not cold sounding, but it feels cold in your hand. Yeah. And they are dead straight. You know, there's no truss rod. There's no... That's that, not that going anywhere. That neck will be straight for a thousand years. Right. You know. 
not really much adjusting on them. But it is, you know, being dead straight, you can't put relief into it. So it does feel different. It takes yeah. a little bit of, you know, getting, you got to know what you're getting into in an aluminum neck guitar. Yeah, I bet. But they are super cool. I own aluminum neck guitars myself. Um, and yeah, they're really a fun, huh. different kind of guitar material, different style of guitar. Uh, I don't know if I'd want only aluminum neck guitars, but having one in your arsenal is a pretty pretty nice uh, addition and, and something fun, something different, you know. Right, yeah, that's cool. And then the Travis Beans have the connecting T right, right there in the headstock. That's pretty cool, too. Yeah. All right, and then, yeah, and there, there's a white one in here as well as a backup. So two of each, except for the Explorer, that's the one. Yeah, the Explorer is one, the only one we got out here with us. Oh, very cool. All right, great. Well, let's uh, let's talk about amps and pedals. All right. Okay. Now we're on stage. I guess the 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 interesting thing for me is that he's he switched to magnetone amps. Um, yeah, we're using magnetone amps this tour. We're on this particular blues tour. Uh, he does have a signature magnetone hundred watt heb that he uses in Guns and Roses and with uh, Miles Kennedy and the Conspirators. Yeah. But on this tour. This is a completely different rig built for this blues tour. So we're using a pair of M80 Magnetone Super 59 combos. Cool. And then ours have uh, Celestian Vintage 30s in them as opposed to the stock speakers. So they do have a little bit of more slash flavor to them in the sure. speakers. And then, yeah, they're great, super loud. You know, we're running a- I bet this is a loud band. It's, you know, uh, we're not on in-ear monitors this time. Oh, we're yeah. doing things a lot more organic. Yeah. Um, you know that everything's on stage it's a lot more like a blues band as opposed right. to a modern rock band yeah. setup so yeah we're running into a pair of 50 watt combos uh on the full setup we have a running pair and then a uh, backup pair on stage with them and then smaller combos smaller magnetone combos to use with the pedal steel which isn't set up today and then also yeah, hard to get that on yeah <laughs> yeah stage. not on this stage <laughs> yeah and then there's also another magnetone m80 super 59 that goes that's being used for the to drive the talk box. Oh, okay. Because as you guys may or may not know, to use a talk box or at least m traditional talk box, uh, you need an amp head that's just a speaker that shoots into your mouth. Uh, yeah, if anybody doesn't know how a talk box <laughs> works, it's really just a little speaker that sends the guitar amplifier into your mouth, and then you use your mouth to shape the sound that's coming out so you can sound like Peter Frampton. Right, so this tube right here. That's the tube here, yeah. yeah. And then uh, that's his cable. We're on a cable this tour. That's another difference is we're not using the regular, you know, Axiant wireless that we use in the, on, the, on the rock tours. You know, sure. this is all cable. This is, this rig you could actually, you know, our touring rigs are tens of thousands of dollars yeah. worth of wireless and switching and all that. Right. This you could actually build. Yeah, yourself. You know, this is this is accessible. This is a working man's uh, pedal board, working totally. man's rig. Yeah. Um, so, with the, the exception of those really expensive guitars, yeah, the you rest. need money. <laughs> yeah. it's, this isn't cheap stuff. Yeah. To, be, to yeah. be clear, this isn't cheap stuff. But this is more, you know, a more organic, more you sure. know, guitar into the amplifier as opposed to, you know, the the high powered stuff we use in you know arenas oh, yeah. and stadiums yeah um, well, well let's talk about the signal flow so essentially quarter inch cable from the guitar yeah. into first thing it's going to hit is a tuner of course because if you're not in tune doesn't matter who you are you're going to sound not great right uh so yeah tuners first foremost most important thing i always tell people if you're the best pedal you could buy to sound better is a tuner. Right. So the uh, Peterson Strobe. Peterson tuner, yeah. Peterson so Strobe Sump. I love Peterson's. Slash likes them. You know, great, very accurate. This one has a big, colorful display. Right. It even changes colors so you can match your, <laughs> you know, theme or whatever. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it goes into the Peterson tuner. From there, it goes into a Dunlop Wah. You know. And he just uses the straight straight Dunlop Wah, right? Uh, he has a couple signature Wahs. Yeah. He had one that an older one that had a boost circuit. Oh, really? Yeah, that had a boost circuit that you could engage. That was the big red one, I, SC95 or something uh, like that. I don't remember the exact model number. Um, he stopped using those a while ago. And then he has another, he had a, a later signature wah that had a really cool, like a hammered kind of sanded back finish. Yeah. Uh, the, the Dunlop people told me that wasn't a very cheap finish to do. Uh, but yeah, he, he's used that for a long time. And then on, on the big tours, you know, the stadium stuff, we use rack mount was because yeah. that way you can have controllers around the stage. Sure. You know, you could be in front of this guy or that guy and that you can engage or disengage a wall. And those are controllers that 
run a, uh, a unit that's actually back in Guitar World. But there's no rig in Guitar World on this tour. It's all all him. You yeah. Know? Usually somebody, you know, one of his techs is doing the switching for him. Um, but yeah, on this one, he does all his switching. He does, you know, he's pretty self-contained on this. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, he goes into the wall. From there, we go into a CAE, um, a line driver boost, which is he's used very. He's used a lot of them over the years. Uh, it's very simple. It's just one knob of boost, and he uses that for solos, just to, you know, jump out in the mix, get sure. a little more dirt out of the amp. It's a pretty. It's a very clean boost. It just you know gives you a bit more signal to work with. Give you a little, little kick in the pants, so to speak. Yeah. And then we have an Ibanez TS9 Tube Screamer, which you know that's made famous by. Uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan was was a big proponent of those, and then that's a very very popular you know uh, it's an overdrive pedal. It's not quite a distortion. Like if you put it into a clean amp, you'd be still missing a little bit, but that will drive you know a little bit dirty head into a great luxurious big sound. Sure, you know great great overdrive. That'll really push in. You know they call it a tube screamer because it makes your tube scream. Yeah, um, and then we're going to an MXR Phase 90. This is a that is the uh, EVH signature one. Super, super simple. One knob. You just find you find you dial in your speed, and you get that, you know, really cool phaser effect. Um, really nice. You know, give it a little depth, a little lushness to your sound. Sure. Uh, from there, it goes into a BBE Leslie simulator, which oh. simulates a uh, a Leslie rotating speaker. We actually have two real Leslies on this tour. Uh, they're big, you know, refrigerator furniture sized pieces of gear that Teddy, our keyboard player, is playing as Hammond through. They're, oh, how they're great. originally made by Hammond or for Hammonds, uh, you know, so you could have the rotating and it, it had, they have two speeds, you know, a fast and a slow speed. And it makes a really cool 3D kind of, you know, swirling sort of psychedelic effect. Yeah. And he's simulating. Yeah, it that. simulates that. Cool. And then from there into a Boss DD3 digital delay. That's a very, very, you know, meat and potatoes delay. Very clean sounding delay. They've been making them since the 80s. And, you know, if you want a very clean repeat delay, um, that's a good, good, solid option. Very famous pedal. Stan you know, been those have been used by everybody over the last 40 years. Sure. Uh, and then from there, it's going into the MXR um, Univibe, which is it met, uh, mimics the old Univox pedals. And so it's got like a chorus setting and then like a vibe setting. And that's like another sort of sort of like the Leslie, sort of like the phaser, yeah. uh, but a different flavor again. You know, it, it gives you depth and like a little bit of movement in your sound so yeah. you can hold a chord and it gives you a little again, maybe a psychedelic or whatever you want to call it. But yeah, it gives it it gives it some body. Yeah, and it, and I like that he's taped every effect in the sweet spot, so it's not yes, going to get... All, all the knobs are taped down, so they're exactly where they're supposed to be. There's big orange squares. You know, I, there's been a trend in pedals for them to be made smaller and smaller so you can have a pedal board this big. And unless you're, you know, doing your switching with your toes, I don't see how that's, you know, or, you know, you're trying to fit your pedal board <laughs> yeah. in your gig bag. Right. I tell people if I had a signature pedal, it'd be a one square foot that was all one button that you could hit with a basketball <laughs> from the other side of the stage. Right. So, yeah. And then uh, that's what's in the pedal board itself. From the pedal board, it goes into a Whirlwind AB selector that can switch between either the main rig or into the talk box rig, which, again, you know, comes back into the tube. The talk box is that red thing that's probably off camera right now, but that's a, you know, an old talk box. Sure. And so, yeah, that's uh, pretty much the rig. He's got a slide there for some stuff. And yeah, he's on cable, like I said. Yeah. And there's the talk box tube that goes in his mouth. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Man, I can't wait to see this show. So you guys are out. Great band. You're out hitting it all. Yeah, we we uh we pretty much just started. We've done rehearsals. The album's out. Um, great here. album. Yeah, yeah, the album's doing really well, and it's 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 great album. I agree. I've listened to it quite a few times myself. And yeah, we're about to start our tour in Montana in a couple days. We're here in Nashville with the Gibson folks. All right. I'm always happy to be home here. And uh, yeah, looking forward to this tour. Rehearsals have been great. Band sounds great. It's something a little bit different. It's something getting a little bit out of our comfort zone. But I mean, I'm out, you know, we're out here with our friends. We're making great music and we're looking forward to bringing this show to the people, you know. Yeah, that's great. So this is going to be a great summer for us. Well, congrats. I love the album. I can't wait to see you guys on tour. Now let's toss it over to Tash.
What strings are you running? These are Daddario NYXLs. And they're Daddario NYXL. But they're Daddario <laughs> strings and I've been using those for forever and I love them. Daddario. Daddario strings as well. Daddarios. Right. Daddario. I've been using Daddario. I'm a fan of Daddarios. Started using these Daddarios. I, I like the Daddario NYXLs. This is a Daddario. And I got the NYXLs on here. Okay, now I'm with Tash Neal. Tash, hey man. Hey man. So good to see you again. <laughs> the Always a pleasure. Yeah, yeah. Always a pleasure. As soon as I heard this record, I texted you and thought, man, you guys are gonna, you're gonna like win awards for this. Living for the City, that was my favorite track on the whole, uh, on the whole it's album. It's very kind of you. Oh. It's very kind. You, God, great performance. I really so appreciate did, it. How did the song selection process go? Did you, you and Slash kind of talk over some options and? Well, the, yeah, he actually, he had an idea, yeah. a good idea, and uh, had a, a pretty extensive history with the material because uh, the blues band was kind of the first thing he did, his first solo project after Guns N' Roses. Oh, wow. In the back in the day, decades ago. And uh, so a few of those songs were actually playing on the record and live, which is awesome. So he's lived that music. Yeah. Um, but he's like, yeah, just... What, what are you thinking? If you have anything that you like to play or any blues favorites, send them over. Yeah. And I think he did that with everybody. Like yeah. He asked a lot of the singers on the record, like, hey man, like, yeah. what would you like to yeah. play? If you or, could do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Some people have really interesting ideas. Oh like, yeah, God, like, great songs in the record. Like really man. super yeah. interesting choices. Right. Um, that you wouldn't necessarily expect for a blues record, which I think are cool. Oh yeah, so cool. Right. And are you so, and you guys are, you're out solid promoting this. Yeah, the, the, we're, the we're on tour. Band. We're doing a Serpent Festival. Yeah. Serpent Festival, folks. <laughs> but uh, it's going to be all July, all August. And uh, yeah, Slash had this idea of doing like a blues traveling festival for a long time. So wow. finally he's getting to do it. God, that's just great. great. Yeah. So are you singing, like you're doing the majority of the singing through the whole Yeah, thing. doing a bunch of singing, which yeah. is, uh, which is fine, man. That's your thing. Yeah. I got to listen to, you know, you listen to this record, and and I love these too. Yeah, yeah. Like I grew up playing a lot of them, yeah. and uh, so I I lived it as well. So I was like, man, this is great. It was very natural. For right, me. right. So it worked out. Yeah, great. Well, man, I, oh, I can't wait to can't wait to see it because I yeah, love man. the record. Now let's talk about this. So this is a, is this a new acquisition? This yeah, I've had this for like a year. And it's it's reconnected me with the instrument, which is which is great. Not to you know, every guitar isn't the same, right? You know, I, I'll play anything with six strings, but not everything is going to inspire stuff. Out of yeah, you, yeah. Or you know, make you as musical. Right. But this 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 does the trick, and I was it was a trip for me to feel like a seventeen year old again. You know? Right. Oh yeah, I remember that. Right. Know? So is it a fifty six reissue? This is like a. Well, it's a gold top, I know that. Yeah. But um, this was a gift, to be yeah. honest. Um, God. Fabulous, yeah. man. And the, the P90s. You, P90s, you know, yeah. The, the, uh, when we did that thing together here, you were playing your, your SG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is so. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, right here. Yeah, this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is the SG. Yeah. Which I got because I needed it. I just needed a light guitar. I played a ES335. For a long time, that was like the guitar I played, uh, right. the Chuck Berry Cherry Red. Yeah, you know, but it was too heavy for me. I had back surgery oh. in 2020, and I couldn't. I was like, I can't do these heavy guitars. Mm -hmm. But I need Gibson as my spirit animal. Sure, yeah. Has been since <laughs> yeah. I was like 15. <laughs> I, I, get it. I get So it. like, uh, it's like I need a light Gibson guitar, and I'd never had an SG before. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna get an SG and. It's great. It was perfect for me. Yeah. I have the Gibson neck, so it's that feel. But um, it was lightweight, so I could I could be on the road and, and functioning. And, and, yeah. And there's long walks in the airport. Oh, you right. Know what I mean, you gotta oh, be brutal. This is serious stuff man, for the. Uh, there's the a L5. physical toll, man. It's real stuff, man. Yeah, rock and roll is a it's, it's a contact it's, sport. It's physical, <laughs> yeah. man. You're out there. You're, you're out yeah. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that. So this is now, is it kind of your number two on this yes. tour? Yes, only because uh, 
this is so inspirational. Yeah. Like it's like uh, it makes me want to practice. Right. Like when I was like a kid. It's, yeah. It's yeah. weird. It's yeah. it's bizarre. It's like possessed or something. Yeah. No, I I get it. And you know, so. it's it's like those magic guitars. It's almost like a like a stray puppy that walks up to you and. Yeah. Becomes your friend for life. It's like the cat distribution system. <laughs> yeah, it just shows. So it's like that's pick me. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. That's great. Okay, so two guitars. What what strings are you running? I use a uh, D'Addario, but I'm not picky. Like yeah. I'll take Ernie Ball, whatever. Sure. But Elevens. They have 11s. to be Elevens because I'll break anything lighter wow and i used to i mean i used to break a lot of strings yeah i see you lean into it i break a lot yeah. of e's, b's there was one show i did it's a good one i broke three strings Oof. and it was uh the e, high e the b and i want to say the d oh so i had g low e and a to work with and i finished the set <laughs> we had like four songs left by the second song some kid like in the audience it was like some festival he threw like a string on the stage it's like i found a string man i was like no <laughs> fuck you get out of here <laughs> out of here and, uh, and i finished it was rad people so was, you didn't no? so you broke broke through on one guitar and yeah. didn't change out no man. i don't think i had a backup i think uh it was a fly-in and I, it was early days so yeah. i just went with it fearless and so you had to and that, you could make it work yeah and it's cool you have to think linearly if, if, you're, if anybody's ever in that situation it happens but uh you just rethink the instrument and kind of think outside of the box don't right. be in the patterns and kind of go linearly and it actually be, can be musical oh sure it can be really um I, I bet you played that set differently than you've ever, ever played it. I, it remember it to this, <laughs> I don't remember a lot of shows okay yeah. <laughs> To be fair, and I remember this show, man. Yeah. I, like I'll never forget. Yeah. Especially the kids, this, the kids' face. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> just, I found it. <laughs> Take the strings. Right. Like no. Right. Oh, that's great. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, now you got a couple guitars and a tech, so yeah, you're good. Yeah. Yeah. Be all right. Break away. I'll Break. Still, I probably will still refuse it. I'll be like, nah, man. <laughs> I like the I like the fight. That's great. Uh, okay. And amp, you're running. Oh yeah, yeah. So I'm going through this Fender basement, yeah. uh, which I love. Like for me, you know, uh, pedals are cool, but yeah. I, it's paramount that the amp itself, right, is doing it and yeah. has a uh, warm and just a uh, motive tone sure. and sound. And uh, you know, when you're doing tours and you have to fly in and you're using backline, yeah. You need a pedal board because you can't necessarily trust right. whatever amp you've never met yeah. in your life. So at least yeah. you know you're familiar. These are your friends. Right, right. You know what I mean? You travel with. So it's like, yeah. okay, I know Phil and Bob and <laughs> yeah. Sarah. We're friends. Yeah. So I'll, I'll keep these. But it's so much more inspiring if the amp is really cooking. Right. But my favorite uh, amp, and I have it, is... Uh, Fender 100 watt face basement. Yeah, yeah. Silver face, and uh, with the refrigerator oh. cabinet, you know. Yeah, that's it, man. That's it. I like just the, it's like surfing. It's a it's lot like of riding amp. a wave, man. Yeah, I yeah. love it. You can't beat it. Yeah, you can't beat it. And it's not too. I mean, oh, it's loud, but it feels good. Right. You know, it's not. Some things are loud and like uh, pointed and not. They don't feel good. But yeah. if it's warm. Uh, that 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 level of power and pushing air can be a beautiful thing. Man. Oh, it feels, sure. Feels it feels different. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. Totally. That's that's why I don't get the modeling thing. It would just, you know, I mean, because you're never gonna, I mean, you're never gonna feel like that. Oh yeah, we you know? we talk about it a lot. Like, yeah. Um, but you know, I'm never one to yuck someone's yum. Oh as yeah. They oh say, yeah. But right. Right. Like, they're just different experiences. Yeah. Yeah. Like, different person. I I enjoy. The physicality of the movement of the air. That's it. The physicality of movement. That's, That's it. it. I'm gonna remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? That's good. Okay, so hey, take us through this this very modest pedal board. I think when we did that thing here, I think the only thing you had was a big muff. I yeah. Think, I think you rolled in with one yeah, pedal. Yeah, I did. And we yeah, rolled I in did. with a big muff I think, and yeah, a guitar. I'm pretty minimalist like that. Yeah. Um, good for you, man. But Okay, so so take us from boot to bonnet. Sure. You're going starting with your wah. Yeah, classic um, Dunlop wah. Yeah. I was rocking 
a mini what on tour yeah. for a lot just because it fits in the gig bag sure. you don't need an extra bag yeah the tsa on this because they like to. oh yeah but um the mini one it's hard balance wise actually so it's a bit funny but yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know right but this is much better yeah you can't stand on a no mini. man you yeah. can't and uh yeah. so my balance is better but yeah. this is and it sounds better as well if it's this bigger sure well no disrespect no to I, I no i buy it yeah, yeah man um so that it just does what that does this is a multi-drive pedal with uh, a few buttons i don't even know what they do like some pedals they say stuff like yeah eh, like fat and i'm like fat and fat like what do you mean like, i don't know what that means <laughs> yeah. you know but it sounds great so what it is the xts uh precision multi-drive hey let's 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 hear the thing a little bit okay i want to i want to well, see what that thing does there you are straight in Loud. Sorry <laughs> for the loudness. <laughs> that was great. You know what I love, man? You're such a humble, unassuming guy, and then you just pick it up and rip it. That's kind of <laughs> I appreciate that. Rip it. I, I love, man, the combination of that guitar with that pedal it's and that It sings, man. And, well, it's funny because if you're using like distortion pedals or anything like that yeah. for younger guitar players, yeah. sometimes they can cut the signal. So sure. when you want, that sound or sustain, and you're like, oh, this is gonna be cool. It's actually not as loud as you think it is. Yeah. So that can be the challenge. So this is cool because it doesn't cut the signal. It's very clear and you can hear it and yeah. you can get some sustain and that like bite, you know? Man, it just wakes the whole thing up it's too. It's loud, it's, it's loud. Yeah. And this, the muff is cool because it's the classic. This is actually a Russian uh, big muff oh. version. Um, yeah, and I, I dig it because I've always liked Muffs, my favorite guitar players. Right. I use them. Yeah. Um, so it's a classic sound. The only thing is, it, it, it's, it's tough. Uh, it works in a trio setting, but in a bigger band setting, it's tough because the signal can kind of get lost. No disrespect to yeah. the company. I love Big Muffs. Yeah, no, to but I that's totally the get thing. it. So you have to, it's. Um, it's like picking a sword or something in battle. Like you have to pick and choose depending on the situation. Right, you know? right. So I have it, but I haven't been using it that much. This is the tuner. Um, yeah, gotta have it. Which I, I have a, I'm funny about tuners. I don't trust them all the time. So <laughs> I'll, I'll ha I don't. I don't trust the <laughs> a healthy, four ones. A healthy distrust I don't. of tuners. They, yeah. they don't, because, well, okay. Let's, okay, there's two things. One, sometimes they're inaccurate. And yeah. you see there's like a meter and it's funny they don't settle yeah it's good but so i'll use the clip-ons yeah and they've, they've really improved like i'm oh, kind of old so i remember totally. when you know what i mean i remember <laughs> when it was invented like the first yeah. clip-ons and they weren't great yeah so these yeah they can be off so i'll, I'll use both yeah. just to kind of make sure and then a third thing i'll do is i'll tune within the guitar you have to tune with it to the instrument itself right just because that says a thing or this says a thing doesn't mean that the guitar is in tune with itself so I'll, right. I'll do the classic you know harmonic yeah right your ear's gonna your your ear won't lie that's it yeah and then then you can safely yeah you know dip yeah. in the water and all yeah. that yeah but in the heat of battle loud band yeah man. you gotta have it gotta yeah. have it <laughs> you, gotta you gotta have it this i just got um Shout out to Shooter Jennings, an old friend, uh, his dad, Waylon. This is his oh. new phaser pedal. Right. And it's killer, man. Oh, yeah. I, I reviewed that pedal. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's rad. Yeah. It's, 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 a, it's really, it's almost like too rad. I barely use it because uh, yeah. I'm like, yo, it's crazy. Well, it, that pedal just makes everything so 
big. It's heavy. You know? yeah, I love it. It's yeah. cool. I'm gonna hey, I'm gonna get it more into do, it. Yeah, okay, let's hear the thing. Do you, do yeah. you move it in combination with uh, some of the others? Sometimes I just like it by oh, itself. interesting yeah. waves and stuff oh yeah that's yeah it's it's so cool sometimes it's kind of like an ottawa sometimes yeah, it's kind of yeah. like a it kind of gives a univibe yeah yeah totally interesting yeah. uh sound to it but. oh yeah that's right I, I love how how modest this board is basically three pedals yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Really. your bass player Twice yeah, as many he's pedals. got more pedals yeah. than I do. <laughs> yeah, 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 which is That's funny. twice as much yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know what all of them do. It sounds great though. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that's great. That's great. But yeah, just I try to keep it stuff that I understand. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, that's all. So you guys are out hitting it all all summer. Yeah, July. Uh, yeah, and everywhere this, yeah. in the states and a uh, couple of dates in Canada. Yeah. But yeah, first dates in Montana. It's gonna be oh, great. Oh really? Yeah, 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 fabulous. Missoula. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. That's but yeah, great. come check it out, man. Serpent Festival. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be fun. Great. Well, hey, man. Uh, congrats. I'm, I'm serious about that Grammy, man. I think it's gonna happen. That's really kind of you, man. <laughs> I from, think your, so. from, from your lips. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. All right, y'all. Till next time. <laughs>